Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of NCIS Season 19, Episode 19. This is the Brat Pack. By the way, NCIS, how do you call an episode the Brat Pack without actually having any of the Brat Pack in it? <laughs> like, what gives? I know. I was sitting there watching the credits. I'm like, it's got to be, like, directed by, we're going to see a Molly Ringwald in there. <laughs> we're going to see Andrew McCarthy, somebody. He's been directing tons of Blacklist, but yeah. nope, nothing. No. Instead, we have Sean Mary's daughter, which, you know, yeah. great for Sean Mary. You know, it was the daughter, Kay Ryan, got a chance to do an episode together. <laughs> I... I promise that this video will be valid. It will not be mid, which, by the way, right. is this a real sign that we're all getting old? At least for me, I've heard the term mid used occasionally on like Twitter. I've never heard anyone say valid like that once in my life. This is the first time I've heard mid. So, you know, I'm 47 years old. I don't feel bad about not knowing today's lingo. So here we are. All right. Well, <laughs> Hit that subscribe button, and of course, let us know in the comments if you've heard any of these things. But no, we are here talking NCIS every week. It is hopefully going to be a really exciting end of this season, fingers crossed. Also, follow us over on Instagram, Matt and Just TV. We have a whole bunch of new pictures up of Fifi Fontaine, my new bunny. Yeah. She met up with Coco, and it went way better than I thought. <laughs> you know what? I... It was very heartwarming. This episode of NCIS, okay, it's not as heartwarming as the Bunny and Coco meeting oh, for the first time, yeah. but that's that's a very high bar. I think it was fun for what it was, though I will admit, now that we're kind of closing in on the finale, I'm just kind of chomping at the bit for a little bit of something more. Yeah, where's that big arc that they brought up with the Raven? I mean, <laughs> yeah. they just like dangled that and now it's gone. I. I still feel confident it's going to come back and buy it before the end of the season. But at the same time, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, we getting close to the end of all of this. Like, where is it? It felt like and it's hard to really know, like the planning process for the show. And I don't know if this is a situation where, you know, whether it's Sean or the producers came up with an idea to have his daughter guest star. And that was sort of the impetus for the story or if they had that role and they cast Sean's daughter for it later on. I, it's it's hard to really know, but it felt like so much of this episode is kind of just geared towards that idea. Sean's daughter was great. Yeah, she really like, was. She was really good. I absolutely <laughs> believed her as sort of this, you know, bratty teenager yeah. that's having a hard time being moved around over and over again. She's finally found her place and is learning that her mom is going to be moving again. And she takes some pretty extreme measures and here's sort of where I was like, hmm, I don't know. She's breaking a bunch of like pretty serious laws with yeah. this hacking where I get that McGee's kind of like, oh man, you know, I was kind of that kid that liked to tinker around with computers. Yeah. It's like, okay, that is not the same no. as what this girl has done. There was a lot of understanding in this a little more than i think would normally come out of ncis for a teenager that nobody knows like we yeah. all know that this is sean's daughter in real yeah. life but this ain't sean's daughter on the show <laughs> it felt like this episode was very much the oh shucks criminality episode where it felt like it was really wholesome despite the fact that there were multiple like serious crimes being committed at de several different angles and we saw the episode once upon a tim like we knew everything that mcgee did in the past it is not the same as what tegan is doing here in the present i'm sorry timothy mcgee that was such a good episode i know oh my goodness it's, i loved once upon a tim it's probably my favorite mcgee episode ever yeah. and it is a situation where i'm gonna compare like any mcgee episode to that i think the yeah. The other thing I think I was really sort of wanting in this episode is we kept hearing these stories about McGee's daughter and the princess dress and like all these different angles as to how he should handle it. But we never actually saw the daughter. And so the whole time I was just like, are we just going to be told about this and never actually see it? Yeah, it was. I think I guess it's hard for me because I'm not a parent. So I don't know, like, is this odd behavior? 
is this normal behavior that a preschooler wants to wear a princess dress every day? I mean, we saw a lot of different angles on the show. I mean, actually, really, it seemed like only McGee had a problem with it. Delilah was yeah. fine with it. You know, Jessica Knight was like, yeah, it was a big deal. She wants to dress up like a princess. This is the only time in her life she gets to do so. Let her. And even we had even Torres yeah. drop his little Zorro Easter egg there. Because for those of you who do not know... He has been cast as Zorro in an upcoming TV show that is still like very, very, very at the beginning stages of it. But it was still kind of cool to see him be like, hey, man, when I was a kid, I dressed up like Zorro all the time with my little spatula. And look how good I turned out. I'm like, I see what you're doing, NCIS. I see you with the yeah. Zorro job. Here's here's what I'm going to hope in my super weird meta mind from all of this is that this is NCIS being like, See, Wilmer, it's okay. We want you to do Zorro. We're happy for you, but we also want you to continue to do NCIS. So we're going to put this joke in here so that we accept you. Hey, maybe this is just what I'm thinking here. Maybe there is a way for him to do both, but maybe it's a way with NCIS that he's maybe not in every single episode, kind of like what we saw over on Hawaii Five-0. Yeah, it's... Possible, like I, as long as we. You no, know, Danny was gone sometimes. He was yeah. gone for quite a few episodes, so it's possible to work that out. Uh, yeah, I, I really hope they do. I just hope we get something, some more news on that before the finale. I don't want a repeat of the Bishop situation where we just watch the episode Bishop is gone, and then after the fact, we randomly learn on Instagram that Emily's leaving the show. Yeah, it was a strain. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really strange. Okay, but you know what I did like, and yeah. I'm sure a lot of you enjoyed this as well? There was a Gibbs reference. Also, my favorite Parker scene in the episode is this the random women hitting on him, which was just very... It was, I, I felt like a part of this was in CIS trying to come up with their own version of let's play back the Gibbs is a silver fox, but with Parker. And we saw that on the show in the past, but it kind of worked for me. I don't know. It's it's all right. I think that they don't need to be quite so obvious about it, but that's okay. No, but, it was it was a cute moment. I like the Gibbs's rules and messing them up a little more is my Parker moment. The The thing I think I enjoyed so much about it was when they were like, What's your name? And then he was just like, What's your name? Yeah, it was so creepy. I know. Listen, it was such a creep show. And, and he responded, <laughs> he was just like, Alden? He said it. And like, I've never seen Alden Parker more afraid in the entire time he's been on this show. Those women were coming on strong. Yeah. It, I think the, like, so much of the enjoyment of this episode was sort of seeing Sean on screen with his daughter. Yes. It's just the. The, the case itself, there was never really that much momentum in my mind that, okay, Tegan is really the big bad because it's like, okay, no. Sean, we're going to cast her teenage daughter and then we're going to make her out to be a murderer and a villain. And, you know, she hasn't had a ton of major acting roles. Just like, okay, you guys aren't going to do that. Don't try to trick me. No, they, they weren't going to do that. But there was a part of me where I was kind of like, okay, she hasn't had a lot of acting roles. Maybe she wants her sort of like, big breakout here to be something really really meaty where she's like yeah make me the criminal make me the villain of this give me all the <laughs> villain so i can show what i can play that's it that's a good point and i guess it could have been cool if they went at that angle i i, I think ultimately they went for more of the Oh, she just got tricked by some weird dude who was older and catfishing her. Yeah, like, I don't know if she wanted to come in and play the villain and the big bad of, you know, this episode or whatever. I don't know her, so I'm not sure what she was hoping for. But I can understand why the show decided to go in this direction because... This is her dad. So there's going to be like this very natural, beautiful chemistry yeah. with them. And why wouldn't they want to jump all over that? It's going to make her look amazing, him look amazing. We're going to get these really gorgeous scenes between the two of them. Like at the end when they're sitting on the bench, sort of, you know, connecting with each other. I was just like, I'm all right with this. It, it really was about the two of them, this whole episode. And it was really well done. Yeah, it was Really, really wholesome. And, you know, while I, of course, was begging for more on a couple of things, there are there are two little things I tried to pick up on here that could kind of play out moving forward. First, Torres seemed to be doing 
a lot better, of course, because this is NCIS. There's no, like, acknowledgement of anything he was going through, but... No, he was uh, having an alcohol problem in the last episode, yeah. where so much so that he needed help getting sober, and this episode, he's seemingly fine. I am going to take that as a positive step that apparently it does not even need to be mentioned again. Yeah. Also, Palmer... You were really, you really wanted Jessica Knight. The, the moment that you saw NCIS Hawaii Ernie on that video chat and he was being kind of a little thirsty, you were just like, no, 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 no. Get me Jessica Knight down here. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that guy was being so thirsty. This was the thirsty episode. We had those two <laughs> ladies thirsting over Alden. Then we had that guy thirsting over Jessica. Guys, get yourselves in order. Like, you don't need to be so obviously thirsty. You can drop little hints and we can get it. But yeah, Jimmy was not having that. He was no. just like, no, you're good. We've got everything we need from you. Done. Yep. Hey, why don't we get Jessica down here after all? I was like, okay, I see you. Yeah, the, the good... You can just tell her how you feel, Jimmy. You don't have to make it this complicated. Next thing we know, like Dr. Grace is going to be like barging into the office at the end of this being like, where's Parker? Hey, uh, Parker. I yeah, it's getting a little too much, guys. Like, no. You can be a little more subtle with the flirting. It doesn't have to be so like, hey. <laughs> I'm really interested to see what they're doing with Parker's ex wife now <laughs> in the finale. Is she going to come in that same? Listen, apparently Parker's got some magnetism that none of us understand. No, I, I don't get it. All right. Well, we'll, we will be back. There is a couple more episodes this season. We'll see exactly where those go. So hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss any of that. Follow us on Instagram, Matt TV. We will see you here next time.